Water scarcity is often defined as when your water demands um, exceed your water supply. But in the case of Pakistan, that is not the case. We get around 229 billion cubic meters um, uh, per year. So just to put it in context, only 16 other countries have more water than us. So we are actually, we usually don't top the charts in anything, but when it comes to how much water we get each year, um, we are pretty much at the top. And not so all of it comes. Yeah. Sorry, so sorry. I don't want to break you or kind of intervene. But so, what does that mean when we hear about the reports coming out from the UNDP and also from Pakistan's National Institute of Health, which claim that Pakistan is the fourth most water scarce country in the world? It became water stressed in 2000, and now by 2030, it is facing absolute water scarcity. So, what, so what does that uh, you know confound? So there are two kinds of water scarcities. One is actual and absolute water scarcity. One is um, economic water scarcity. Um, and these, even though these reports do state that Pakistan is water scarce, a lot of the data they have is from years before. And most of these reports do not count the actual runoff that we get. So in Pakistan, we get water supply through different sources. We get it from the Indus River Basin, we get it from the Haran Basin, Makran Basin, and then we also get rainfall. Often rainfall and snow melt is not included in the calculation. So the very most recent report that was done, which is also reflected in the new World Bank report, um, getting more from water, um, they actually did a big, bigger, they contracted out some work to look at how much water does Pakistan even get? Because that is a very important uh, question that we have. And the reason it's important is it's very easy for governments to say, we don't get enough water, so we can't do anything. But I'm saying Pakistan can do something because they get enough water. So the issues of scarcity are created due to governance challenges and not due to Nature, nature has actually endowed us with a large supply of water. Now, here's where the problem comes in. Um, water stress is defined as how much water we get um, per capita, right? So if we look at the population, we have a very large population, around 230 million, right? And our water supply is the same. We have our per capita water is indeed quite low, but it's not as low as one would expect and not as low as um, there, there are many countries that have uh, the same or less per capita water than Pakistan. And most of them actually have higher GDP. Mm -hmm. Stands at a water resource per capita, we should still be doing much better economically. Water is should not be a current constraint for economic growth, nor for human development. So even the issues that we see of water scarcity, they're quite, they're issues of management and productivity, and they're issues where we haven't harnessed water better for better living. Now, even within this space of water, there are multiple issues, right? Water for agriculture, water for industries, and water for drinking, right? And then there's water for energy. And the last is water management in terms of floods. We have multiple areas of water that have problems and each have different causes. So, so I, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 thank you for bringing that up because I was going to say that there are multiple layers associated with this issue. Because this is when we talk about the water that is available per capita, but then it becomes the question that automatically begs is that how much of it is accessible is drinkable that can be consumed by individuals and then you know how much of that water is being consumed by the agricultural sector because there are reports which identify that majority up to more than actually more than 80 percent of the water that Pakistan has available to itself is being con is being consumed for agricultural activities yeah so um I think I think you've also said it quite correctly. One of the biggest problems is that even if you have water per capita, not a lot of it is actually being consumed or accessible to people. 
a large proportion of water is being uh, allocated for agriculture. Now, there are basically four crops uh, that use around 80% of um, Pakistan's water. There's cotton, sugarcane, wheat, and rice. Um, and they're, they're important crops for the country, but they only contribute 5% of the GDP, right? So they're not, uh, and they're using 80% of the of water. The water yeah. there is. So there's, there's a yeah. huge imbalance over there. So Yeah, right. there's a huge imbalance. Um, so of, of these four crops, you have cotton and you have sugar cane, which are export crops. Um, so they they actually generate quite a bit of value. Um, wheat and rice, however, the productivity is quite low. Um, and we, we'll, we'll come to the agricultural issues a bit later, um, but their productivity is quite low. So okay. the question more is, we have quite a bit of water, but we're using all of it um, pretty much all of it for uh, these four crops that are not generating enough returns, which leaves very little water for other uses, which are critical. And of those, the most critical is having clean drinking water. Um, okay. Now, the drinking water issue is a big one. Um, it's one that most reports ignore. Um, and, and they're critical because each year... There are a lot, there are many deaths that are due to waterborne diseases. So one of the biggest ignored things that that often don't come in the news and it's not you it's not an imperative for the country is that access to drinking water is a big problem. It's going to get bigger as the population grows, especially in the big urban areas where um, the water quality standards are um, they. They, I mean, the current tap water, mm -hmm. we, we can't even drink and we uh, we definitely don't meet our standards. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge issue we have. Uh, and I would say it's probably more than the general water resource management. The issue of water and sanitation is now much bigger because given our current current urban growth, we definitely need to reallocate water. And there aren't um, there aren't very good mechanisms to currently reallocate agricultural water to different users. So the way water is allocated is we have an accord that is used. Um, it was signed in 1991 that says how water needs to be allocated across provinces. Um, but that accord, primarily the water that is allocated is for agriculture. So very little, there are very little allocations that are for industry and for drinking. In fact, they don't even factor in most of the calculations. Um, so, uh, actually, so, yeah. I think, yeah, you actually very correctly, rightly pointed this out and identified because when we look at economic development and we look at the level of water that is accessible, there's a disparity between provinces. Uh, I was just reading up very recently that Punjab gets almost 60% of Pakistan's total water, then KPK gets around 20-ish percent, Sin gets about 10, and then Balochistan is left with less than 3 or 4 percent. And uh, if we mirror that to the level of development in some way, uh, we see that same disparity across provinces. And uh, possibly because Punjab is more agrarian in nature, it tends to consume or take away the maximum amount of water that is available. But if we limit let's for one limit it to uh, the urban centers and like you said and i wanted to kind of zoom in a little more on that um let's say lahore we both are from lahore we've you know we've to some extent grown up there but now tap water is you cannot no longer consume tap water in lahore uh there's high levels of arsenic uh the groundwater resource storages are depleting uh what why why is that happening is that because there is not enough water for Lahore, like from Lahore, when I say Lahore, I mean the urban center, or uh, is that due to gross mismanagement and what kind of mismanagement and what can be done? Like, how can we address this issue? If we have to reverse it, what immediately needs to be done? So um, pollution is a very big issue um, in, when it comes to Lahore. 
Um, so in Lahore, the issue is not that you don't get the water. If you open the tap, you will get water. So it's not an issue of the quantity. It's a major issue of quality. And the quality is uh, pretty much due to um, existing pollution. Um, and with the groundwater, it's a different thing. So people already know that they can't drink from the tap water. So they all dig their own tube wells in their homes. Um, there is no current monitoring of how many tube wells there are that are being used for domestic users. So there is no measurement or data on that. Most of that is then used and what ends up happening is that you have multiple people that are tapping into the same aquifer, the water level slowly lowers. There's a point where it lowers so much that it permanently goes down and then you won't get water from that layer at all. So that's when you exceed the sustainable yield. So then you have to go even further down. And that's been happening not just in um, Lahore, it's been happening in a number of cities. Um, in Karachi, the bigger issue then is when you have the when you have the water table going down, you also have the um, ocean water that can intrude into that water table. So then you have salt water intrusion, which increases the salinity of that water table. So that makes that water pretty much undrinkable. So in the coastal areas, the issue is even more problematic, but Karachi is a big city with huge, um, huge water demands. So th that's probably a bigger issue. In Lahore, the pollution is the big issue. And pollution isn't the mandate of the, uh, the water institutions. And that's the other problem. You see, water quality now falls with the environment departments. So whereas water is totally dealt, like the irrigation departments will deal with irrigation water, the Vasas will deal with water supply, but then the Department of Environment deals with water quality. So there isn't really any um, single department that will look mm -hmm. into drinking water and quality together, not in a cohesive way. Mm -hmm. And then the other problem is even though these mandates are within at the local level and after the 18th Amendment, we've had so much decentralization, there isn't really a lot of capacity um, at the provincial level. So a lot of water management has historically been federally managed. And then after the 18th Amendment, um, even though a lot of the responsibility is at the provincial level, um, water is kind of problematic because it's you know it, it's it's split across provinces and the there's an accord that deals with it so it needs some kind of federal oversight and then it also needs that kind of investment levels which i don't mm -hmm. think the provincial governments can meet um, and if they can meet we see it often in punjab which is a wealthier province, but we, we can't expect that same level of investment in Balochistan, Sindh, or KP. 